Hi, I'm Susan Sutton, editor of Adhesives and Sealants Industry. Thanks for watching ASI Insider. Michael Costello of Stahl is joining us today to discuss renewable carbon as a path toward more sustainable chemistry. Michael, hi, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Susan. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Let's start uh, at the basics. First things first, what is renewable carbon? Yes, renewable carbon refers to the fact that uh, most chemicals, in fact, most chemistry is based on carbon. So carbon sometimes is painted as a bad word in, in for example, in the energy industry. People say, how, how are you reducing your carbon? Uh, carbon footprint is, is a bad thing. But of course, in chemistry, all organic chemistry, for example, which is a, a huge part of the, of the chemical industry, is based on carbon. So the term renewable carbon was uh, designed to take into account the good carbon uh, that we should be using in order to replace fossil fuel carbon, uh, which is what we want to eliminate, of course. So that's where the term comes from. Um, it can be split into three forms, in fact, because it's not just, although this is one key element of renewable carbon, it's not just about using biomass and natural raw materials, but that is one of the renewable carbon elements, taking carbon that's grown and, uh, on the surface in a plant or extracted uh, from a plant. So you can extract oils and things from living things like plants and trees and use that as a raw material in your chemical process. And that's good, that is renewable carbon. But there's two other elements to renewable carbon which also uh, are taken into account. And one of them is this idea of carbon capture where you have some exist, existing industries uh, on, on, the, uh, on the earth like the cement industry for example the cement industry produces CO2 as an effluent, as a byproduct, and you can actually capture that CO2, carbon dioxide, convert that into a form that can be used as a chemical raw material. So that's also considered renewable carbon because it's a good thing that you're doing. You're converting something that would be going into the atmosphere into something that can be used in a chemical. And then the third one is recycled plastics, recycled materials. So again, we're talking always about what we call uh, the geosphere above the surface of the earth. So anything that's already existing on the surface that could be recycled and reused and made into a raw material, then that's the third element of renewable carbon. I think the best way to think of it is, is anything that comes from the surface of the earth rather than not using things that have to be mined and dug up and taken from the earth. That's the way I like to think of it, yeah. Okay, great. How is renewable carbon used in the stall production process, both now and then how you envision it for the future? Well, the, uh, the forms of renewable carbon are beginning to come online in, in, in a way that we can use them in the chemical industry. So liquids or, or solids, for example. So the way that it fits into our uh, production process is that we would, instead of using a raw material that is derived from the petroleum industry, for example, we are going out into the marketplace, into the biotechnology industry and looking for alternatives to those that can come from these renewable carbon sources. So it doesn't actually change our own production process so much as long as we can find one of these raw materials that's an alternative to the fossil fuel version. The problem is that you don't yet have alternatives to those fossil fuel versions that are coming from renewable carbon in many cases. We do have some alternatives. Those are the ones that we're working hard on and, and using, but there's still so much to do because some of the raw materials that we and, and all chemical companies use just don't have those alternatives ready yet. They're not either developed, and even if they are developed, they're not yet scaled up to a size that, that can be properly sourced. So it doesn't really change our process so much. The difficulty is getting the availability of those raw materials that we can already easily use and, and make into our chemicals. That, that's not really the, the issue. Yeah? 
Okay, I think that might lead a little bit into my next question. Stahl's joined the Renewable Carbon Initiative. Can you explain what that is and why your company decided to be involved with the effort? Yes, this is an initiative that was started by an institute, a research institute uh, in Germany called the Nova Institute. And uh, they uh, put together a group of uh, chemical companies that they, with whom they had had some contact and projects in the past on this topic and decided to uh, re redefine uh, the, the purpose of, of uh, the chemical industry in accelerating the switch away from fossil fuel raw materials towards what they then called renewable carbon alternatives. Because what we've seen in the energy industry is in, in many countries, uh, in Western Europe and, and the US, for example, quite a strong switch away from using fossil fuel energy sources. But the chemical industry has been lagging behind that. And that's going to get a little bit worse in the next 10 years as a percentage of the whole use of fossil fuels. The chemical industry portion of that total percentage is going to increase because the energy industry is already decarbonizing. So this group of companies led by the Nova Institute got together uh, to form an initiative, which is really an awareness campaign. It's a, an awareness initiative. First of all, to explain what renewable carbon is, to explain to the world that, yes, we can get our chemical raw materials from sources which do not deplete fossil fuels, but we need to accelerate that research so that the change can happen faster because we're running out of time. And that's really what the initiative is about. It's about promoting that awareness, getting as many big chemical companies involved so that that research into the fossil fuel alternatives can happen and give results faster so that companies like us and consumers then can benefit from uh, using these resources instead of depleting the fossil fuels, which of course causes CO2 that's been trapped in the earth for thousands and millions of years to be released and uh, causes the greenhouse effect and global warming. That, that's what this is about, of course, yeah? climate change. What are some other activities that Stahl is um, involved in, in toward the goal of sustainable chemistry? Well, sustainable chemistry has many different elements. Uh, of course, climate change and reducing fossil fuels is, is one of them, but not, not the only one. And we're spending a lot of uh, investment uh, time and, and research on measuring our environmental footprint, not just the carbon footprint, which refers to this uh, climate change uh, impact. The overall environmental footprint includes your water footprint. It includes the uh, toxicity of, of chemicals that, that, you, that may be on the market. It includes the pollution that may be caused by the use of your chemicals further down the supply chain. So we're involved in many uh, initiatives, and in fact, we're on the board of many uh, uh, nonprofit organizations where the stewardship uh, that's required to eliminate some of these issues with water and pollution in our end markets are being managed. So we do many other things on sustainability related to that, not just focused on what we put into our chemicals, but on what happens to those chemicals and how we as a responsible supplier can make sure that what happens to those chemicals later on in our customers and in their customers can also have a limited environmental impact. One of the ways to do, to do that is to measure environmental impact using methodology like life cycle assessment. And that's another area where we're investing significant time. So the, I mean, this is my job, that's, that's my, uh, function in the company is to implement a sustainability strategy and and there's many many projects that we're working on to do that to try to reduce our impact and to try to uh, make the supply chain more transparent yeah well it sounds like you're a very busy man in pursuit of wonderful goals so <laughs> thanks for Indeed. taking the time to talk with us today i really appreciate it thank you very much susan my pleasure and thanks again for watching. To learn more about Stahl and its activities, visit stahl.com.